I'm Judea Murray, and here on a positive note, we highlight the most heartwarming stories from all around our tri-state that move and inspire us. And today, we begin in New Jersey with a birthday boy who's no stranger to the old Ivory Keys. He started playing the piano in 1933, and 87 years later, yes, 87, he's given his biggest performances yet. Let's take a look. Meet Henry Hank Shapiro, who just turned 100 years old. Well, I started playing the piano when I was five because my mother asked me what I wanted for my birthday, and I said I wanted to take, play piano. Shapiro, the son of Russian immigrants whose parents owned a dry goods store in Dover, started playing piano professionally at age 13, back in 1933. And I got 75 cents for my first job playing three hours. I thought I was wealthy. He spent decades playing in nightclubs, restaurants, and concert halls in New York and New Jersey, including leading his own 12-piece Henry Shapiro band. But it turns out those 80-plus years at the Keys were just a warm-up, because these days Shapiro was playing to the largest audiences of his career. His Saturday afternoon Facebook Live performances, started during the coronavirus lockdown, are being seen and heard by thousands of people across the globe. Tomorrow I'm going to be 100 years old. When you hear from people like uh, the Netherlands, or Australia. Australia, or other places like that, you know, you figure, you know, what the heck's going on? I try to select the songs for Facebook, that I think uh, a lot of people know through the years, and it brings back a lot of memories. I could tell you a lot more about Hank Shapiro, about his years in the Air Corps in the 1940s, about his grandkids and great-grandkids, about his day job as a longtime shop owner, about how sharp he is at age 100, and about how I got goosebumps filming from the next room as he played my way. Maybe though, it's better for me to just be quiet now and let you hear all that in the music. Don't mind me, I'm just making sure I follow Mr. Shapiro on Facebook so I won't miss his next concert. That's the kind of peace and positivity I want in my life. All right, now switching gears, I hear there's an author in the Bronx tackling an age-old insecurity for minorities, our hair. Meet the woman teaching our children that bad hair doesn't exist. We don't have bad hair because bad hair does not exist. Suma Azul Brown dispelling the stereotype of bad hair in her book, Pelo Malo No Existe. Pelo Malo is a colloquial term that has been used to bring down the self-esteem of many beautiful people uh, of color. Azul Brown took on the stereotype head on. Love your hair, ama tu pelo. By writing the book after a babysitter used the term to describe her then three-year-old daughter's hair texture. I wrote the book because I had a story and a reason why I I wrote it and along the way I've heard so many stories with so many individuals that dealt with the term pelo malo and beyond. What started as a children's book now turned into a series. Is it true mommy? You have good hair and we have bad hair? Which debuted Tuesday on the first day of National Hispanic Month. It's actually called Dique Latino. We not only tackle hair, but we also uh, tackling colorism. We're, we're showing a new face of what Latino uh, looks like. Azul Brown, who describes herself as a proud Afro-Latina Garifuna author, says she's excited to highlight her culture and community through her creative works. We get to bring our stories to life, we get to bring my story to life, and we get to empower our community together. I think that's the perfect message to spread. Every trait of yours is beautiful simply because it uniquely belongs to you. And while we're talking hair, just how much do you know about the stuff that grows or maybe doesn't out of your head? Willie Stolzberg is putting us on the spot with some hair trivia. Many of us spend a lot of time blow drying it, coloring it, and just plain obsessing over it. We're talking hair. So let's see how much you know about it. Is hair dead or alive? It's alive. It's alive. I'm gonna say it's dead. It is dead. Yes. Hair is dead. dead. Yeah. 
What about the dead end? That was really? good. That was good. I think it's alive coming out of you, and when it gets to the end, it's dead. It's dead. You, you just said dead end. You won me over at dead ends. I mean, we, we make it look alive, but. Yes, she, oh. All right. Handsome and witty. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst hairstyle you ever had? A bowl cut. You did the bowl cut? Yeah, well that was when I was like five. I remember bleaching my own hair in high school. That was the big mistake, but. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get a perm? I got a perm in fifth grade. Let me tell you, that was something. Oh God, yeah. that rat tail. That was pretty well, bad. That was, well, actually in middle school, I decided I wanted a middle part. And you know, I have a cowlick over here, so I took the scissors and just tried to cut in the middle part. I didn't realize it didn't work that way, so Aww. that was weird. Yes, yeah, so I had a chunk missing out in the front of my hair. That's a cool. Well, I had, for some reason, when I was little, my mom started my bangs like halfway to my head. It was like half a head of bangs. Why? <laughs> Want to test your trivia skills on our next Zoom call? Well, just follow News 12 on Facebook and let us know. It may just be you that I put on the spot. Over in Westchester, things are looking pretty bright for a little girl named Lexi and has everything to do with her neighborhood's new lights. Lexi Corvino likes to run, but she doesn't always have the energy to do it. That's because she has mitochondrial disease. It's a disorder that affects the mitochondria's ability to produce energy to sustain her organs. I feel tired, I have leg pain, and I get stomach aches. Her parents say Lexi was diagnosed two years ago. Now she's on a treatment that's slowing the progression of the disease. <laughs> but she still has to go to the hospital frequently. Sometimes I tell my friends that I have mitochondrial disease and they're like, can we get it too? And, I, and I'm like, no. So her parents have started Lexi's Might to Fight, an organization to raise money for research on the disease. The hope is that there'll be a cure sooner rather than later. You know, given the outcome with most of these, it's not um, great. Um, the unknown is the hardest part and just seeing her, you know, go in the hospital a lot. And the whole town is joined in to help raise awareness. The green lights around Harrison are meant to do just that. You know, the, we see the kids playing together and having fun. And um, I just think it's important to find some, a cure for, for her and um, to do anything we can for them. While COVID-19 has prevented Lexi's parents from holding any fundraising events this year, their hope is that the lights will be enough to raise awareness in their community. Now, usually it's not a good thing to find a stranger staring at you on the train, but if that stranger is Devon Rodriguez, you're in for a treat. For the past 10 years, Bronx artist Devon Rodriguez has been sketching people on the train and then turning them into painted portraits. And most recently, he was named one of TikTok's Latinx ambassadors for Hispanic Heritage Month. His work's been blown up. Lately, his art has a new theme, the new normal. It's all about featuring New Yorkers in their masks. The videos he posts to TikTok show his whole process, and they've been getting millions of views. In fact, his followers grew to almost three million in just a few weeks. I don't know, I'm always personally inspired when I see someone that's doing great things and you don't really expect it, and it's like they go against the norm. So I just want people to see that, you know, since I'm from the South Bronx, I'm Puerto Rican and Honduran. Um, I'm, you know, I'm from a neighborhood where people don't expect much to come from. So I hope it just inspires a lot of people, whether you come from uh, the inner city or not, you know? 